What is up guys? Tyson from Sony Retro here. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. Where was I? Show me retro. So since I had some time, I thought I would address the three game challenge, the $25 three to keep and three to sell. Now I'm going to be honest, I was tagged for this challenge back in January and that was by Bone Z06. If you're not familiar with Bones' channel, he's a great guy, got an amazing collection. Check him out. The reason that I did not accept that challenge is because that was just before Mo Game Con Jr. and I had already made a video about quite a few things that qualified for that challenge. So I had told Bones, thank you for the tag, but I respectfully declined because I didn't think it would be fair to name three things that I was already selling again, and it might not make for the best viewing material. So fast forward to a few weeks ago, I was tagged again by Wartrain from the channel Wartrain Wins. Another great channel, check him out. and. I figured since some time has passed, a few months, I've kind of gone over what few things that I have and there's some other things that now would qualify for that challenge. Now I also want to talk about something else. So this challenge has been around for quite a while now. I think it originated back in November or December and it's made the rounds and as it's gone around, it's kind of mutated, kind of like a virus. It's almost like one of those sentences that you would take five people and you would whisper it in their ear and then each one tells it and then by the time you get to the end, it's not what it was when it started. So originally, or the way that I interpreted it, is that you were going to sell three games and then there's three that you would never sell. And to me, that is quite a challenge for a lot of people. And it seems like the challenge has kind of gotten to where it is now three games that I could part with. But in theory, I could say, well, yeah, I could part with a lot of this stuff. Will I? No, probably not. <laughs> but to me, the real challenge is actually getting rid of three games that are worth at least $25 in your collection. And I thought that's what people were starting to do. And I don't hold any animosity to anybody that's changed the challenge or that doesn't want to get rid of anything. It, it definitely gets more people involved, but that was the original challenge from what I remember and I'm going to stick to those guidelines. So with that being said, Bones, Wartrain, I say to you, challenge accepted, challenge accepted. No. All right, so let's start this off with the three games, $25 and up that I'm going to sell. So this was a game that I picked up on Let Go. And it kind of was two different parts. I first picked up the box and the manual. I think I paid three or four bucks for it. Then I found a guy selling just the cart for five bucks. So I have less than 10 bucks in this game. And that is Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. Now there's nothing wrong with this game. It's actually kind of fun, but I've already put about five or six hours into it. And it's, it's just not one that's something I keep going back to. I mean, it's just okay. When a game doesn't really hook me or I find myself not wanting to play it, then it's probably just time to get rid of it. I don't have a lot invested into it. So just move it along to somebody that really wants to play this game. And, and this game is currently going for between 50 and 60 bucks. So definitely hits the challenge. This next game was a Metal Jesus recommendation. It actually was one of his hidden gems. And that game is Little Red Riding Hood Zombie Barbecue. I know what you're thinking. How dare you sell a Metal Jesus hidden gem? How dare you? But you know what? It's just a game that's not as good as I had hoped it would be. It's not terrible, but it also is very repetitive. And it gets really difficult. It's just the same thing over and over. And it's got a great control scheme with the stylus. And it's a shooter. It's different, but different doesn't always mean good. So 
while I was at the time lucky to have this, I think I paid a little over 30 bucks for it at a V stock. It's just not one that I'm going to go back to. So it's probably going to get sold at Mo Game Con. That is unless COVID-19 shuts that down, but we'll, we'll see. Either way, this is going to get sold. This last game is from my Saturn collection, which I know you would think, why would you do that? But this is one of the hardest games in my collection. That is Iron Storm. Now this is a strategy game that is got a steep, steep learning curve. It is a working designs game and working designs made six games for the Saturn. My original plan was to get all six. I have three so far. You know, that would be like a, a small accomplishment that I would say, hey, I got all six working designs games. But the other three would cost me roughly $1,000 if I bought them completely. Get out! That's crazy talk. I'm just not doing that. There's just no point in me keeping this. And to say that, wow, I've got this $70, 70 to $80 working designs game, that's not the type of person that I am. I don't need this to sit on a shelf just to say, hey, look, I have this. If I'm not gonna play a game, then it's just time to move it on to somebody else. Just to give you an example, I guess it was last year, there was a video game store that was going out of business and they had a Saturn game in there. It was way under value and then they had a percentage off of that because they were closing. So I got it for a little over a hundred bucks and I ended up selling it for close to 300. And Retro Mikey 78 can back me up on this. You might be thinking, well, why would you get rid of that crazy expensive game? Well, it was a steaming pile of dog shit. That is why. Even to make sure that it played, just to, to kind of put it in and make sure before I sold it that everything was good. It was terrible. The games in my collection are, are special to me and they're ones that I want to go back to and play. And this just doesn't fit that criteria. So now on to the three games that I will probably never sell. And, and I hate to use that word never. Let's just say I, I don't see me getting rid of these in the near future because I don't want to say never. And I'm going to fudge on this just a little bit because I clearly met the first challenge. As a matter of fact, I doubled the first challenge. These games are all 50 and above. So how about that challenge, YouTube gaming channels? That just happened. So the first game that I would not get rid of is these two right here. And the reason being that I love how they look in the room. I do play them and I have a lot invested in them. If I were to sell these, I wouldn't get anywhere near what I paid. And, and I'm okay with that. But for that reason, I would not sell them. And I do like having them in here. I love coming in here when they're on and it just feels good to see them. And I can't really describe that. I kind of get, you know, a little warm and fuzzy because it brings me back to my youth. And, and I plan on getting more whatever I can fit in this room. There's definitely going to be a pinball over here and at least one more arcade one up over there. And I get it. Some people don't like these. They say, why would you get multiple of these when you can get just a multicade? Well, I can turn one of these into a multicade. The point is, I love the artwork. I love the small form factor. And again, the more that you have, the more it feels like you're in an arcade. And it's hard to explain that to someone who just wants one machine that does everything. These I'm not going to get rid of. So on to the next one. This next one might be a surprise, but it is Mario Kart for the Wii. This game was very special to me because when my girls were younger, we used to play this non-stop. We actually still, from time to time, when boyfriends are over or whatever, we'll, we'll break this one out. And it's still got the original sticker on it that I got from GameStop. I remember taking this home and for the first few days, I couldn't stand it because it came packed with the wheel and I just thought that you were supposed to use the wheel. Like, why would they put it in there if you weren't supposed to use it? And I just stunk. I, I was all over the place and... Tons of ah! I 
I finally realized that in order to be good at this game, you have to use either a Pro Controller or my preferred method was a nunchuck and a Wii Remote. And after that, I just, oh my God. I mean, I got all the stars next to my name. Funny story, this game almost got me like kicked out of the house. Like I would, I remember playing this over like a 10 day off break around the holidays. I'd be up to like three or four in the morning trying to get these stars. And it was kind of like bragging rights to play online and because everybody could see that. Just getting so upset when I would just miss it by like literally like a, a couple seconds and screaming and my wife would be yelling. She, she just had enough. She was just like, I'm so sick of it. You know, and I'd be like, but you don't understand. I have to get the stars. Get out! So this game, just because of the memories that I have, I won't be getting rid of this game. The last game, if you're familiar with my channel, you'd probably know what it is. Uh, I've made a couple of videos talking about this game, and that is Dragon Force for the Sega Saturn. It is a strategy RPG. It's a working designs game. So you can see the, the amazing packaging here. It's such an addictive game, and you basically are kind of like the ruler, and you're recruiting other people, and then you're taking over other castles. I love that style of RPG. You have to move your forces up and you tell them what to do. It's all in real time. Amazing game. This, this game is Sega Lord X's favorite game, okay? If he approves of it, it should be worthy of anyone's top 10 list. Sega Lord X approved. It's just an amazing game and a lot of people have never heard of it, never tried it. And I get it, it's expensive, but there probably are ways nowadays with the power of emulation that this is probably getting to the point where you can play it. If you can rip a copy or, or download it, do so. You will love this game. All right, so before I go, I wanted to tag a few other channels and I'm not sure if they've been tagged already. If you have, don't feel obligated that you have to make a video. You're not gonna hurt my feelings. The first channel that I wanted to tag is Big Family Gaming. The next one is Dads and Lads Gaming. And finally, Gary at Rock Solid Productions. And I, I just wanted to get serious for a minute. I just want everyone out there to be safe and smart. If you can social distance, please do so. I think Iowa Retro Gamer Dad said it best. He just had said that it would be so awful if one of the people in our gaming community in this tight knit, uh, large but yet tight community would, God forbid, contract this virus and something were to happen to them. I mean, it would be just terrible to have a loss in that community. And I don't, shouldn't have to say, wash your hands and, and don't touch your face. Th these are things that everyone knows, but just stay indoors if you can and work on your backlog. That's what I hope to do. And for the love of God, people, please stop hoarding toilet paper for sake. My God, I mean, I think about the people that were already low on toilet paper before the hysteria started and then they just needed to normally go out and get some and at that point there was nothing left and now it's 50 bucks for a roll of four packs on ebay it's just this world has gone completely batch crazy no pun intended but enough of that so if you like the video please hit that thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber please consider doing so it really helps out the channel all right, guys, I will see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching.